Hello, this is Hawker Bean, and today we're going to be reading about four entities. Usually it's five, but entity number 47 has a node added thing, meaning that there's no arc before it. So we only have four today. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get into this. Starting with number 46, Lucky Cranes. And so the ID is 46, its habitats are cosmopolitan. Levels with high populations of humans. Four on, level 409 and level 777. I don't know what itemic means or the properties here, but we're going to go on to the description. Formally classified as Object 33, Entity 46 looks, looks uh, look and feel like paper cranes made from high quality origami paper. Called locally e called Lucky Cranes. They come in a variety of patterns, colors, and sizes. Some are as small as 1 inch, and others as large as 5 inches. Generally, they take the form of the typical Orizuru pattern. See figure 1. However, some have been found in more complicated patterns, such as the following. Fantel. See figure 2, we'll get there. Rose knot. A crane with its back folded it into a rose like shape. And typical Oruba with multiple heads. Under normal circumstances, lucky cranes are passive and non hostile entities. They will allow wanderers to pick them up and handle them and are generally stationary. The only time lucky cranes become hostile is when they are in a colony and swarm in response to threats. While lucky- oh yeah. Behaviors. While lucky cranes are attracted to places where humans gather, they prefer to hide out of sight. Finding a solitary lucky crane can be difficult due to the fact that they hide in inconspicuous yet odd spots like folded up inside books, tucked away in cupboards, and in one notable case, having replaced a soup in a can of soup. Sometimes, lucky cranes hitch rides with human hosts, tucking themselves in a pocket or in a bag as the hosts wander the back rooms. Across these, these hosts, there are a few physical similarities, implying it is not a physical human attribute. Blood type, brain activity, flashes, etc. That attracts lucky cranes. Rather, it seems lucky cranes tend to be attracted to hosts who have a history of random events affecting them possibly, or history of escaping danger despite the circumstances. In layman's terms, lucky cranes are attracted to lucky people. When observed in conjunction with Large colony behavior, it implies lucky cranes feed off luck. Near large human settlements, the threshold for what constitutes larger large settlements varies from level to level. In levels such as level 11, the human population is to meet a threshold of at least a few hundred. In levels such as level 44, the population needs to be at least 20. Lucky cranes will form colonies that have an estimated population of hundreds, if not thousands of cranes packed together in the space available. These colonies can be found in a secluded spot near the settlement, but are never more than one mile away. Usually, these colonies are harmless, but when a lucky crane's population greatly outnumbers the human population, settlements can quickly collapse due to a series of unfortunate events happening, including but not limited to increase in minor injuries such as stubbed toes, increase in freak accidents, Misplacement of objects, including those essential to survival. Brain aneurysms of people who previously had no risk of such. Heart attacks in people who previously had no risk of such. You know, actually, everyone is constantly at risk of a brain aneurysm because it can happen for absolutely no reason. Whew. 
If the luck of Ukraine in population becomes too great, settlements collapse and collapse is a very likely possibility. See the discovery section for more. Thankfully, Entity 46 are passive entities, allowing wanderers to pick them up and move them. When threatened with fire or water, Lucky Cranes will no clip away from these sources of safety, either by moving a few feet or to another level entirely. The threat or, of fire or water can quickly disperse colonies by scaring them into a new area or into smaller colonies. However, no lucky crane should be harmed by any means. Doing so may trigger swarm behavior. In levels where fire water is unavailable or inadvisable well, to use, colonies can be dispersed by simply picking individuals up and moving them gently to prevent causing terrorists in their body. Swarm behavior. While in colonies, lucky cranes can become aggressive if the colony has been harmed by a physical creature. While swarming, lucky cranes will target the creature that harmed them and rapidly no clip in and out of its body, taking bits of flesh with them no larger than a paper cut. The combined damage of thousands of paper cuts results in, a, in an excruciatingly painful death from blood loss or from asphyxiation as blood fills the lungs. Once the creature is deceased, the lucky crayons will become stationary once more. Due to this behavior, extreme care and caution must be taken when dispersing colonies. There are a few colonies with numbers too big to completely disperse safely or in a timely manner. They are lo located at the following levels, level 13, level 4 and 9, and level 777. Wanderers visiting or living in these levels should try to disperse 10 to 25 cranes every day to keep the colonization, colony population manageable and to prevent settlement collapse. Biology while it may look and feel like paper, the inner body of a lucky crane has a series of, mult of incredibly thin and delicate tube-like structures that function as its inner organs. These tube-like structures are found between each layer of a lucky crane's paper-like skin as they move toward the wings or other flat parts of the body. They flatten and shrink, becoming microscopic. These tubes transform. <laughs> for you who were for those wondering that was my younger brother I know he didn't say anything but he just walked in and gave me some chips anyway back to this these tube-like structures are found between each layer of a lucky crane's paper-like skin. As they move toward the wings or other flat parts of the body, they flatten and shrink, becoming microscopic. These tubes transfer a shimmering gold between gold liquid between layers. This gold lake liquid makes lucky cranes more durable than regular paper cranes. Observations showing that it heals small tears in one to two days and larger tears over the course of weeks. However, fire and water destroy and inhibit these organs, making lucky cranes susceptible to these elements. When a lucky crane dies, the gold liquid hardens and dulls into a dirty yellow color, gluing the body together in a form of rigor mortis. Some wanderers actively hunt lucky cranes and attempt to eat them alive due to a rumor that it will give you a good luck. However, because it's impossible to verify if this is true, it's inadvisable to eat a lucky crane. 
Not only do they re reflexively no clip out of danger, but the gold liquid itself is sour tasting. I think the paper like substance can cause uh, gastrointestinal distress. Attempting to eat a deceased lucky crane is also inadvisable as the gold liquid becomes hard enough to break teeth. The few autopsies done show no evidence of a central nervous system. Meaning they don't have a brain or spinal or anal cord. But there is evidence lucky cranes do have rudimentary intelligence. Avoiding water and fire, hiding from water is trying to clear them out, and their behavior during swarms. It is unknown exactly how lucky it is unknown how exactly lucky cranes feed, presumably since colonies exist without physical OO contact, let's assume it to be an ambient property that humans give off. However, because no instrument and in that instant liquor that met <laughs> However, because no instruments that measure luck exist, it's impossible to verify. As to what they they do with the luck they consume, there are multiple theories, but one is the most plausible. Luck is what allows them to no clip at will. This area has created as many waters who can no clip I will say it's harder after finding a lucky crane on them. After, however, after a few days of rest, the no clipping ability returns to normal. It is unknown on where lucky cranes come from or how they reproduce, but research into level 4 or 9 is ongoing. We'll have to read level 4 or 9 eventually. Discovery. For a long time, lucky cranes were classified as Object 33 due to their pat as if it, it de that is a hard word to say. Many wanderers considered them trinkets that had a habit of disappearing and reappearing. Just an odd feature of the backrooms. Due to the fact they would appear after a lucky event happened to a wanderer, many considered them good luck charms and used them for trade. While they were creeping doubts from the meg of lucky crane status of being an object, it wasn't and until the collapse of the original base of Mega on level 4 that their destination was changed. Collapse of base of Mega. Eyewitness account. <sighs> Maybe I can say the words this time. <laughs> okay. Eyewitness account of Eric Corbell. I was a newbie at the time. I'd only been in the back rooms for about a year. I was, I believe, 29 at the time. <laughs> I went from hiking in the woods to being bossed around by a bunch of teens. Life's funny that way. Anyway, after base Alpha was made and settled, all the overseers got together and decided we should make another base. More safe havens for wanderers. So they decided I had on level 4. It was easy to get to, pretty safe. So we made grunts. So we grunts made out of spoons, food, water, a few weapons and beds. But as the alphas grew, things started to happen. There were accidents, just minor ones like stubbed toes, paper cuts, but then they grew worse. People started losing things, water would somehow get into rations. The stuffed toes became sprains. The sprains became broken bones. But no one was prepared for Lily's death. <sighs> it was a complete accident. No one really knows what exactly happened, but while she was putting together the little clinic we had, a cabinet fell and crushed her leg. I remembered her screaming. I rushed to help pull the cabinet off her leg, but you gotta remember, we weren't set up well back then. We didn't have any doctors. We did the best we could, but her leg started to heal wrong. You could see the pus us oozing out of the wound, thick and green. God, and the stench. When we found the antibiotics, we thought we had a stroke of good luck. But Lily, she had a fever. She was out of it. Could barely think, let alone talk. She couldn't tell anyone she was allergic. What a stroke of rotten luck.
Everything went to hell in a handbasket after that. Ten people. Ten! All died. All on the same day. Brain aneurysms or heart attacks. Our radios. Something would get in then. Um, and they would cut out. Just as we needed orders on what to do. I mean, free up storage space. <sighs> Hang on. Okay, we're back. Should have that fixed up. Fuck, at one point, some poor bastard ran straight into the outpost with a pack of hounds on their heels. We fought them off, but lost half the people we started with. Do you know how long all this took? A month. 30 days. And we'd had more casualties than any other known level at the time. People said we were cursed. I gotta say, the overseer stepped up. Told everyone to evacuate. Those kids gained a little respect in my eyes that day. Proved to me they weren't just playing around. They were serious about helping people. Anyway. We left, but then but that didn't start up others from moving in. Of course, they also started to have bad luck. People started dying again, so they left too. It wasn't long before level 04 became a ghost town. They were this close to rewriting level 4's description in the database. But some guy some water who just dropped in mentioned he saw something in level 4. I volunteered to check it out. Maybe get peace for those who died. Maybe get peace for myself. He took me to a supply closet. One close enough to the old base Omega to be within walking distance. But just out of range would have been interesting to us when we were setting up. I opened the door. And you know what I found? Fucking origami cranes. Hundreds of them. Thousands! All packed together on the shelving, sitting there like fucking dolls. Seen one before, found in my bag. Didn't think of much of it until I saw that closet. Of course, we didn't know oh, at the time everything was because of them. But damn it, we need to feel like we were doing something. I went back to base Alpha, explained what we found, and Charlie decided he wanted to come too. Had an idea of getting rid of them all at uh, once using hairspray and a lighter. <sighs> Again, just a stroke of bad luck. How are we supposed to know that these things could a uh, fucking no clip? The moment the flames touched one, there was a whoosh of air that sounded like pages wrestling. Next thing I knew, Charlie was choking. He dropped the lighter and hairspray. He was bleeding from those thin cuts all over his body. I see those fuckers dropping in and out of reality. Blood covering their wings. It took one, maybe two minutes m tops. But the moment he hit the ground, everything stopped. Everything was the same, except for the blood on the crane's wings. I rushed to check his pulse, but, well, not much you can do when there's thousands of paper cuts in on the inside. After that, well, not much happened. There was a lot of debate, but the overseers had to move them by hand. Picking them up and relocating them far away. It took us two weeks, but we cleared them out. We started to rebuild, keeping an eye out for more closets full of those things. But we didn't see one. Once Base Omega was rebuilt, I moved on to other things. As far as I know, Base Omega hasn't had an infestation like that one. And again, people over there tend to get twitchy. And there were never too many people stubbed their toes. Do's and don'ts. Do check pockets and other equipment for lucky cranes with traversing more dangerous levels. Do handle all lucky cranes with care. Do keep an eye out for signs of lucky crane colonies. Don't keep lucky cranes as a, as a pet. Don't eat lucky cranes. Don't knowingly carry lucky cranes to new levels with large human settlements. Don't burn or drown members of a colony. Oh, there's lucky crane in fan club. 
I'm not going to uh, put that link in, uh, in the description. You'll find it on, on the link to the entity instead. I don't know that link and I don't, I don't know if I can trust it right now. You know, now I'm kind of glad that that entity number 47 doesn't exist. Anyway, here's entity number 48, Aiden. Habitat, level 0, level 1, level 2, and le level 4, and possibly more. Description, this entity resembles a Caucasian male security guard wearing a mall security uniform and has a security camera in place of his head. It appears to be passive and will even give directions if asked. If you ask about his name, he replies with Aiden. He is very intelligent, knowing many levels and its surroundings. He is very protective and knows when entities are nearby, and the safest ways around them. He will try to protect the wanderer at any cost. You will find him in most of the lower levels and in the surveillance room. Don't ask what the surveillance room is, we will get to it another time. Behaviors. There are multiple Aidens around these levels at once. And this entity is very intelligent and seems to have one consciousness throughout all of the Aidens, as he is able to remember events that occurred be and people that met him. The entities seem to be of the entity seems to be able to speak without having a mouth and can communicate in many different ways. His goal is to protect people he sees in are in danger. He accomplishes this by helping wanderers from entities and traps. He is known to save wanderers from danger while they are sleeping via moving them to safe levels and areas like level 0, the metro, and the hub. You are able to ask any questions that, that he will gladly answer, although he knows very little about the back rooms. If you ask him where he worked, he says I worked at a mall which is now abandoned, which could be referencing level 33. His tool belt is equipped with tasers, flashlights which seem to never run out of, batter, of power, a, a baton, on water, and many more items. Biology. The end he has a certain mall security uniform. The uniform has black pants, shoes, and belt, white shirt, and vest, with signed blue patches on his shoulders. His head is similar to a tall pole security camera, but modified to fit as a head. His badge seems to be damaged, but cannot be identified. Discovery. The ending was first found when a wanderer was lost in level 1. The wanderer shouted help and accidentally caught the attention of Aiden, which he, had he proceeded to lead the wanderer into a safe outpost of people on level 1. Do's and don'ts. Do. If you're in danger, it's always safe to get the attention of an Aiden. Ask if he has an item that can help certain situations. Ask if he can bring you to the surveillance room, if you have the keycard. Don't attack an Aiden. He will use a taser on you or knock you unconscious. He will, however, place you in a safe spot and not kill you. Aiden is a pretty cool guy, I guess. NC-49, combine. I don't know what that means, but we will find out. When it loads. If it loads. Okay. Entity number 49, Habitats, Cosmopolitan, and Levels with a Low Danger Index. Description, a combine is a collective organism resembling a flesh-colored centipede. Its back is covered in 5 centimeter long black fur similar to human body hair. Combines have a very low number of double-jointed legs that resemble human fingers, with the nail of the finger being a chitin-covered photoreceptor as well as acting as a nostril. This organ can open like a clam, where the combine and leg will extend a, a digestive pouch, liquefying and absorbing organic matter. Combines do not have any set head and are capable of detaching segments of themselves if they are too damaged. 
Behaviors, despite their odd appearance, combines are nothing but simple scavengers that do not tend to attack other creatures, preferring to feast on mold, rotten food, and puddles of almond water. However, it is not unheard of combines attacking a moribund or sleeping person. They can oftentimes be seen following human suits using a trail of a trail of or being tasty morsels that they, they can feed on. If under attack, or if they detect a sudden change in overall light, combines tend to flee and detach from two to six legs from its body to act as bait as a distraction for its attacker. If it begins to sustain a lot of damage, it will severe the damage segment from both ends, oftentimes splitting into two relatively healthy combines, and one severely wounded its segment. Biology Combines do not seem anomalous, but rather a colony of mollusk-like individuals. Each leg and a piece of the back of the combine is a single individual that shares just a superficial connection with each other, which can be severed should the entire colony be at risk with minimal damage to the entire organism. Similar to mollusks such as clams or snails, combines have blue blood and a very simple digestive circulatory and respiratory system. But unlike those invertebrae, they have an internal skeleton and strong locomotive muscles, similar to vertebrae. Combines breed in a rather strange manner. They bud with a newborn on leg emerging next to the parent and pushing away the other legs until it's full grown. This may continue ad infinitum. Discovery. Combines are one of the most commonplace beings in the backrooms. As such, there is no sole documented first contact. Additional info. Some rather creative outposts have, been, have even domesticated in these, as a regenerating nature and um, uh, uh, omnivorous diet has made them a, perfect, a near perfect meat animal. With backroom fingies being a popular dish of these people. No way. It's a terrifying idea. Do's and don'ts. Do disturb with light sources as if their presence is annoying. Do scare it for some free meat. Don't rest or sleep next to one, particularly if it is larger than you. Don't leave unsecured edibles or drinkables behind. And Entity 50. When it's ready. I think it was the numbed man? Yeah, the numbed man. Entity number 50, Habitat Majority. Warning. Reading further will expose you to severe risk. Do not continue unless you wish to encounter this entity. Survival Guide. Access. Survival Guide. The numb demand knows as much about you as you know about it. If you know nothing about out it, it will know nothing about you, and it would thus never encounter you. But it's already too late for that. You know his name, and so he knows yours. The more you read this page, the more you will know about him, and the easier it will be for him to find you. He will learn what you are like, what your weaknesses are, where you are going, where you came from, and so on. At this point, he has a basic idea of what you are. He knows if you are a human. He is starting to get an idea of where you are. He is traveling toward your location, but does not know precisely where you are. It won't be able to find you. Stop reading unless you want to engage this entity. This is your final chance to return back. Description The numbed man is a being, vaguely human in form. He is weak and, we can, and can be killed easily. For this reason, he has destroyed his own senses. He tore out his own eyes in order to blind himself. He mangled his nose so that he couldn't smell. He punctured his eardrums to become deaf. 
He burned off his skin so that he could no longer feel or would touch. He has no way to sense anyone nearby, and thus they cannot sense him either. This keeps him safe. I don't know, I think I would notice an eyeless, a skinless guy with a mangled nose. But the gnome um, um, the man still needs to eat to survive. By reading this page, you have given him valuable information. You've given him a way to sense you. By now, he can hear you. He can't see you yet. So stay quiet and you will be safe for the meantime. The numbed man is not bound to any floor or by physical boundaries. So there's no point trying to run away. You'd only be drawing attention to yourself. Every footstep is sound he can hear. Your only choice now is to fight. Remember that he is weak. You can defeat him with the right attack. See the dozen do's and don'ts section to learn how you can defend yourself once he arrives. Do's and don'ts. Do's and don'ts. To kill the numbed man, simply strike him from behind, and he will perish. But now that you know how to kill him, he knows how to kill you. It is already too late. By the time you read this, he's already right behind you. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, that was entities 48, 40, and 46, 48, 49, and 50. Or Lucky Cranes, Aiden, Combine, and The Numbed Man. I don't know, that last one was incredibly interesting, wasn't it? Anyway, if you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Also, look out behind you. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!